The secret to sustained artistic growth is stealing. That's right, copying, tracing, color picking, training yourself to be a one-woman art forgery team. All of that is not only okay, but an important part of growing as an artist. But, and this is a big caveat here, you need to steal with one purpose and two respect. And in this video, I wanna teach you how to steal like an artist. And of course, thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Artists have been stealing from each other for centuries, copying each other's works wholesale without issue. Copying the work of an artist more skilled than you became so popular, in fact, there was even a term invented for it, a master copy. Also known as a master study, this exercise is fairly simple in concept. You find a work of art that you admire by someone far more talented than you, and you try and recreate it as faithfully as you possibly can. This is deceptively simple in concept and can be extremely hard in execution. The purpose of a master study, of this like little heist, if you will, isn't to sell the finished product per se. And I'm gonna talk about the cases when you can and can't do this, but it's to learn technique. Everything from composition to brushwork. You are studying the artwork, very deliberately in your efforts to make your own version of it. If you want to be a successful art forger, if we're taking it to the far extreme, you have to be extremely analytical when you look at the piece, try and observe how it was made, the process, the colors used, and be extremely just conscientious of all of the decisions that you're making in the process and constantly check in with the original painting to see if you are making a faithful version. The artwork that you'll be watching me copy today or steal, I guess if you want to, do a master study of, is by Granville Redmond. Redmond was an American Impressionist painter and lived from 1871 to 1935. He is widely recognized as one of the best California landscape painters of all time. Redmond became permanently deaf as a toddler after surviving scarlet fever, and his friend Charlie Chaplin once said, and I quote, Sometimes, I think that the silence in which he lives has developed in him some sense, some great capacity for happiness in which we others are lacking. There's such a wonderful joyousness about all of his paintings. Look at the gladness in that sky, the riot of color in those flowers. And that brushwork, that vibrant color, what I personally find most enthralling about Granville Redmond's work, it's the reason, the purpose, why I chose this particular painting of his to do a copy of. One, it's to put in the hours, right? Like you have to spend a certain amount of time painting in order to get good, period. But also, there's a lot of interesting things going on here. The landscape is quite busy. We have a ton of colors going on. And the harmony between those colors is very interesting to study. And also the brushwork I find quite compelling as well. Like there's something really special about the way that he was able to use these short bursts of color and just varying colors constantly to provide this busyness to it, but it's never overwhelming. There's a very controlled sense of liveliness to this painting that is quite masterful in execution. I'm not good at like the pointillist kind of style, but it's something that I really wanna get better at. At least like I want to be competent in the style and like communicating that way. So that, that purpose, that choice was very deliberate on my part. And there are two reasons why I think copying this painting is totally fine. Number one is that I'm not trying to pass this off as mine outright. You know what I mean? I'm acknowledging the original source. I'm talking about it right now with you in detail. And I'm also using the process again as a learning experience. Every decision that I'm making, I'm double checking, trying to make sure, is this right? Is this like what the original looks like? How can I blend this color? Like, how did he accomplish this sense of atmosphere, of liveliness, and really trying to be extremely deliberate about my process. That kind of introspection, that kind of just analytical nature is not something that comes naturally when you're just painting from life necessarily. Painting from a painting really teaches technique and brushwork, I think in a way that painting from photo reference really can't teach you. And number three, the third reason why I think this is totally okay, and also why it would be okay to sell this painting, is because he's dead. Um, his portfolio of artwork 
all of his stuff is in the public domain. Now, okay, if you wanted to do a master copy of a living artist, you can't sell that because they're still alive. It's, it's disrespectful. And also, in many cases, the artist might have explicit preferences for when you can and when you can't copy or do a study of their artwork. That goes back to our second caveat, right? You have to have respect for the artist, dead or alive. You have to acknowledge their preferences. So when you are copying, tracing, color picking, etc., make sure that you're doing it not just to like brag or to say that this is yours, that you did it, that's an original painting from you, but that you're using that experience as strictly educational, that you're trying to learn something, get something out of it explicitly in that but process. But before we get into my actionable tips for master copies, I want to talk a little bit about the sponsor of this week's video, Squarespace. Squarespace is one of those brands that I can really speak from the heart on because I use them every single day to run my business. I love Squarespace. They have everything you need to run a portfolio or an online shop, and I've been using them for years. Squarespace Space's design tools make everything insanely easy and they have award-winning templates, but if you are a special snowflake like me and you don't want your website to look like a template, you can customize really everything about your website. In the design tab of the back end of your Squarespace site, you can change everything from the spacing to the minutia of how image blocks work on your website to the fonts, the colors, literally everything you could possibly want to change, you can on Squarespace. It is so customizable. You don't have to worry about your website breaking on mobile or on desktop. Your Squarespace website will work on any device. And with their extensions, they make everything from shipping and taxes insanely easy. If you are interested in having your own Squarespace website or giving it a try, I highly recommend that you go to squarespace.com slash Kelsey Rodriguez and use code Kelsey Rodriguez to get 10% off your first order of a website or domain. You will not regret it. So there are a couple things that you should keep in mind as you work on your own master copies. And the first one is to take your time. This is not an exercise that you want to breeze through. You should be very deliberate and slow about your process here. Don't rush through it. There are no time constraints this exercise. There's no, you know, challenge to it other than trying to create a convincing replica of the original. You'll find that trying to breeze through this will make it far more likely that you will make silly mistakes. Okay, so I tried to breeze through this to get this video done, and I noticed that I had to keep reworking the foreground over and over because I made some crucial mistakes in the beginning that I kept having to try and dial back through the process. So study the original in detail. Make sure that your version, so the surface that you are painting or doing your own version of is of like a similar ratio to the original. Make sure that you're not trying to replicate a four by six foot painting on a nine by 12 canvas and not cropping that, or at least trying to be realistic about the level of detail you're going to be able to achieve in that small space. Also in studying the original, feel free to make sketches beforehand to figure out the color palette, to try and mix the colors before you ever even start the painting itself. Color theory is complicated and your eye will try to deceive you for the relative saturation and value of the colors. For these yellows, for example, I had to remix them over and over again because it was like a very clear like lemon yellow in the original, but I used too saturated of a yellow in the beginning and I had to keep just like dialing that back and adding more and more paint to it. So study the original, don't make my silly mistakes. And then also you'll find that this process will likely make you frustrated, right? Like you don't have the same skills that the original painter does. Don't worry about that. Just focus on learning something. Once you've learned something, consider the piece done. It doesn't have to be a perfect replica in order for your heist to be successful. Remember, this is for skill set. This is for educational purposes, not because you want to rip off just the exact same painting for your own benefit, like commercially or anything. You're just trying to learn something. You're just trying to replicate this painting in the process, learn more about technique, more about color theory, more about composition and brushwork. It doesn't have to be perfect. I kept trying to like fiddle with this piece over and over and over again, trying to make it a little bit closer to the original, 
but I wasn't learning new things by doing that. I was just like fiddling around. So it doesn't have to be perfect in order for the process to still be worth something. And that's really the end of this video. I hope you liked it. Thank you so much again to Squarespace for sponsoring the channel and I will see you in the next one. If you wanna watch more videos just like this, click on the video on your screen right now and I hope to see you there. Bye guys.